Ken Harrelson. Kenneth Smith Harrelson, born September 4, 1941, nicknamed the Hawk due to his distinctive profile, is an American former professional baseball all-star first baseman and outfielder who played in Major League Baseball MLB from 1963 to 1971. He is most widely known for his 33-year tenure as a play-by-play -play broadcast announcer for the Chicago White Sox. In December 2019, Harrelson was named the recipient of the Ford Celsius. Frick Award presented annually to one broadcaster for major contributions to baseball. Early Life Harrelson was born in Woodruff, South Carolina, and his family moved to Savannah, Georgia, when he was in fifth grade. As a child, Harrelson was interested in basketball and he hoped to pursue a basketball scholarship from the University of Kentucky. His parents divorced when he was eight. He played golf baseball, football, and basketball at Benedictine Military School in Savannah, Georgia. Playing career, throwing and batting right-handed, Harrelson played for four teams, the Kansas City Athletics 1963-66, 1967, Washington Senators 1966-67, Boston Red Sox 1967-69, and Cleveland Indians 1969-71. In his nine-season career, Harrison was a 239 hitter with 131 home runs and 421 RBI in 900 games. His time with the Athletics ended abruptly after only 61 games, when Harrison was quoted in a Washington newspaper calling team owner Charlie Finley a menace to baseball following the dismissal of manager Alvin Dock. Although Harrelson denied using the word menace, he was released and ended up signing a lucrative deal with the Boston Red Sox, who were in contention to win their first pennant since. Brought in to replace the injured Tony Coniglaro, Harrelson helped the team win the pennant but watched the team drop the World Series to the Street League Cardinals in seven games. However, in he had his finest season, making the American League All-Star team, hitting a career-high 35 home runs, and leading the major leagues in runs batted in with 109. He also finished third in the American League Most Valuable Player balloting, with two players from the pennant winning Detroit Tigers finishing ahead of him pitcher Denny McLean won the award and catcher Bill Freehan finished second. Harrelson announced his retirement the day after he was traded along with Dick Ellsworth and Juan Pizarro from the Red Sox to the Indians for Sonny Siebert, Vicent, Romo and Joe Asgu on April 19. He had felt that his business ventures made it impractical for him to move to any other city. His agent Bob Wolf added, if Ken left Boston, he'd be losing between half a million and three-quarter of a million dollars. Following conversations with Commissioner Bowie Kuhn at a contract adjustment by Cleveland, Harrelson ended his first retirement a few days later. He won two four minutes for, including a triple in the first played appearance of his Indians debut, an 11-3 loss to the New York Yankees at Cleveland Stadium on April 24. He finished the year with 30 home runs and a career-high 99 walks. He also used his local celebrity status to briefly host a half-hour TV show, The Hawk's Nest, on local CBS affiliate WGW-TV. Harrelson was very popular in Cleveland, with his autobiography coming out around the time of the trade to the Indians. During spring training the following year, Harrelson suffered a broken leg while sliding into second base during a March 19 exhibition game against the Oakland Athletics. The injury kept him on the sidelines for much of the season. When Indians rookie Chris Chambliss took over the first base position in, Harrelson retired mid-season to pursue a professional golf career. Batting Glove Usage Harrelson has been credited with being the first player to wear a batting glove in an actual game as opposed to usage during batting practice. However, Peter Morris' book A Game of Inches says the batting glove may have been used as early as 1901 by Huey Jennings and was definitely used by Lefty O'Dowell and Johnny Frederick of the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1932 and later by Bobby Thompson in the 1950s. Morris does credit Harrelson with reintroducing and popularizing the batting glove in the 1960s. Roger Maris also used what was thought to be a batting glove, most likely a golf glove, in the 1961 season. Broadcasting career. After his time on the Lynx brought minimal compensation over the next few years, Harrelson turned to a broadcasting career beginning in 1975 with the Boston Red Sox on WSBK TV partnering with Dick Stockton. He became highly popular, especially after being teamed with veteran play-by-play -play man Ned Martin in 1979. 
Harrelson left after the 1981 season, moving to a broadcasting role with the Chicago White Sox. Harrelson noted that he and Red Sox co-owner Hayward Sullivan didn't get along. Harrelson served as a White Sox announcer from 1982 to 1985. Executive role with White Sox. On October 2, 1985, Harrelson was named executive vice president of baseball operations for the White Sox. Then general manager of the White Sox role and team and was given a special assistant role and left the team in April 1986, leaving Harrison as the de facto general manager until Tom Holler was hired as the team's new general manager in early June 1986. Holler would have disagreements with Harrison and leave at the end of the season. During June 1986, Harrelson fired assistant general manager Dave Dombrowski, who became baseball's youngest general manager with the Montreal Expos two years later, and fired manager Tony La Rossi, who was soon hired by the Oakland Athletics. Harrelson also traded rookie Bobby Benilla, later a six-time All-Star, to the Pittsburgh Pirates for pitcher Jose De Leon in July 1986. Harrelson resigned his executive role with the White Sox on September 26, 1986, approximately one week before the end of the regular season. The 1986 Chicago White Sox finished the season with a record of 72-90-20 games behind the division-winning California Angels. Return to Broadcasting during the 1987 and 1988 seasons, Harrison was the play-by-play -play announcer for New York Yankees games on Sports Channel New York. From 1984 to 1989, he served as a backup color commentator on NBC Game of the Week broadcasts alongside play-by-play -play man Jay Randolph. In 1994, Harrison served as a broadcaster for the short-lived baseball network and was the U.S. broadcaster for the Japan series that aired through the Prime Sports Channel regional networks. Harrison returned to the White Sox in 1990 as the main play-by-play -play announcer during television broadcasts, teaming up with Tom Passerick until 2000 and Darren Jackson from 2000 to 2008. In 2009, former Chicago Cubs color analyst Steve Stone began accompanying Harrelson in the television booth. During this time, he won five Emmy Awards and two Illinois Sportscaster of the Year Awards. However, in 2010, GQ magazine named Harrelson the worst broadcaster in baseball. Starting with the 2016 season, Harrelson cut back his schedule to road games and select home games. Jason Benigni took over as the television announcer for most home games. On May 31, 2017, Harrelson announced his final year in the broadcast booth would be the 2018 season. After calling his final game a 6-1 loss to the cross-town rival Chicago Cubs, Harrelson officially retired from broadcasting on September 24, 2018. On December 11, 2019, Harrelson was named the recipient of the Ford Celsius. Frick Award, presented annually for excellence in broadcasting by the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. Cash Rizzes, Criticism and Nicknames Harrelson is known for his homerism, open expression of pro-home team bias and catchphrases, also known as hawkisms. Popular hawkisms include, you can put it on the board, yes yes a bomb for insert player here after a Sox home run, he gone and slash or grab some bench after a strikeout of an opposing player and stretch when a White Sox player hits a ball toward the outfield fence. Hawk often states sacks packed with Sox when the bases are loaded. When a telecast begins, Hawk states, sit back, relax and strap it down to the viewers, right before commercial break before the first pitch. Harrison refers to the White Sox as the good guys based on the team's mid 1990 slogan, good guys wear black. When a White Sox player hits a ball which appears to be hitting foul, Harrison often states, stay fair. Hawk will stay dadgummit when a ball that looks to be a home run is caught short of the wall or in general when a play does not go the White Sox's way. When a hitter hits a long foul ball that would have been a home run if it were fair, Hawk will say right size, wrong shape. If a White Sox hitter makes good contact but the ball is hit where a fielder can make the out, Hawk says, that's a hang with them. For a time, Hawk often stated hell yes after an advantageous event for the White Sox. While he insists that exclaiming hell yes is not contrived and is a product of his devotion to the White Sox, it has generated some controversy. He is also known for shouting out mercy after a great defensive play is executed by player or players and sometimes, when it is an exceptionally great play or the play does not go the White Sox's way, he will also exclaim you gotta be.
leaping me. When a batter swings and misses, he will proclaim, big hack, no contact. Harrelson refers to a routine flyable as a kind of corn. Hawk also calls blue pits that land between fielders, ducks knots. He refers to a two-hop and field ground ball as a chopper two-hopper. He calls a hard-hit ground ball that takes a favorable bounce for the fielder bowling brook bounce. He refers to any play with a broken bat as a Mad Abitacola. Mad Abitacola is a local sports radio show host and producer for Amplitude Modulation 670 The Score, which carries the White Sox radio broadcasts. The two met during spring training a few years ago, and Hawk decided to use his name during broken bat plays because of the distinctiveness and sound of his name. When a White Sox rally starts, Hawk Harrison will often enthusiastically say, Don't stop now, boys. In July 2010, GQ named Harrison the worst announcer in baseball. He has stated publicly that he wants to die in the booth during a game and that he will never retire. Though Harrelson has been criticized for his repeated use of catchphrases and hometown allegiances, his popularity with White Sox fans is demonstrable. Harrelson was nominated for the 2007 Ford Celsius. Frick Award won by Royals announcer Denny Matthews, and his presence in a field of nominees for that award was due to the support of fans, who placed him in nomination along with Cincinnati Reds announcer Joe Naxhall and San Francisco slash Oakland announcer Bill King for an online vote. Hulk is also well known for his fierce on-air criticisms of umpires. Harrelson appears to have developed a dislike of umpire Joe West, who in the past few years has had some problems with the White Sox. West had started a game the night before, but called it due to rain after about a half inning of play. In a game earlier that year, West had ejected Ozzy Gillane and Mark Buhl for two separate balks in the same game. Hawk said on a broadcast in 2015, the first rule of baseball is catch the baseball and the second rule is don't mess with Joe West. Following an on-air outburst about umpire Mark Wagner during a game on May 30, 2012, Harrelson received a reprimand from MLB Commissioner Bud Selig. Harrelson's comments followed Wagner's ejection of White Sox rookie pitcher Jose Quintana after Quintana threw a pitch behind Ben Zabrist. After White Sox manager Robin Ventura's ejection for arguing the call, Harrelson commented, I'll tell you what, they've got to stop making guys be accountable. That is totally absurd. Here's an umpire in the American League that knows nothing about the game of baseball. They have got to do something about this. They have got some guys in this league that have no business umpiring. They have no business umpiring because they don't know what the game of baseball is about, and he is one of them. Although Harrison said that such a tirade would not happen again later in the same season, he lashed out at umpire Lance Sparrow following the ejections of Jay Pizizki and Robin Ventura. Harrison stated that Lance Barrett has just dunk the joint up is all he's done, that's all he's done. He also claimed that everything that Mariners pitcher Blake Beaven has thrown up there that catch Emil Oliver has caught has been a strike. If he caught it, it was a strike. He's got two different strike zones. He's got a two foot for Beaven and he's got a 10 inch for the White Sox. What does that tell you? A year later he had another outburst umpire tirade, this time over an alleged blown call in the bottom of the 10th against the Miami Marlins when Angel Hernandez called Alex Rios out at first base, turning what would have been a game-winning bases loaded grand ball fielder's choice for the White Sox into an inning-ending double play. His reaction was an another blown call by Hernandez. Harrelson's emotive and particularly distinctive call of Mark Buhl's perfect game on July 23, 2009 was also notable. As Buhl exited the field after the eighth inning, he exclaimed, Call your sons, call your daughters, call your friends, call your neighbors. Mark Buhl has a perfect game going into the ninth. Also, as the final ground ball of the game rolled towards the White Sox shortstop Alexei Ramirez, Harrison called out Alexei. Harrelson often refers to the White Sox players by their first names. As Ramirez completed the throw to the first baseman Josh Fields, Harrelson shouted, Yes, 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 yes. History. Though some did not like Harrelson's lack of verbosity and obvious hometown boosterism at the concluding moment of the game, others felt the outburst of immersion captured exactly what they were feeling as the perfect game was sealed. A Chicago Tribune columnist, Phil Rosendell, arguing that each perfect game call is memorable in its own way, made an explicit comparison of Harrelson's call to Vince Gully's call of Sandy Kufarek's perfect game. Harrelson had a 30-minute special on ZSN Chicago, put it on the board which aired on Monday, 
June 7, 2010 celebrating his 25 years as a Chicago White Sox broadcaster with memorable footage, memorable quotes and an interview with CSN Chicago's Chuck Goffin. Ken said during the interview, I hope to do broadcasting for the White Sox until I die. He jerked and said how he was going to die in the White Sox broadcasting booth with his last words, you can put it in the board, dies without finishing. Harrelson was honored with Hawk Harrelson Night by the Chicago White Sox for 25 years of broadcasting that was on Tuesday, June 8, 2010 vs. Detroit Tigers. The White Sox had a t-shirt giveaway for Harrelson for the first 10,000 fans that came to the game. The t-shirt has the White Sox logo on the front and in big letters on the back Hawkism with his famous catchphrases on the back. Harrison also threw out the ceremonial first pitch before the game to White Sox manager Ozzy Galane. As a man long known for creating nicknames, his own nickname Hawk originated during his early playing days. Teammates began calling him Hawk due to his curvy, pointy nose. Harrelson coined many nicknames for popular Sox players, including Black Jack McDowell, Carlos El Caballo Lee, Lance One Dog Johnson, Frank the Big Hurt Thomas, Craig Little Hurt Gribbick, The Deacon Warren Newson, Big Bad Bobby Jenks, The Silent Assassin Javier Vasquez, Herbert the Milkman Perry, Jake the Jake Meister Peavy, Dion the Tank Bissado, Willie Pippo Tarras, Paul the Professor Conico, and Maglio Mags of Thorith, along with fan favorite Big Dick Richard Dotson. During a broadcast, Harrelson attempted to nickname partner Darren Jackson the score because of the quantity of peanuts his partner ate, to which Jackson replied, no. He calls his current partner Steve Stone Stone Pawnee. It is unclear if that nickname is a reference to the popular music venue or the Linda Ronsat band, the Stone Ponies. Recently, he began calling White Sox slugger Adam Dunbigan. Biggin is a southern slang term for large people, which reflects Hawk's deep south roots. Then is 6'6 six, six and 285 pounds. More recently, Harrison has been referring to Jose Abreu as El Caon or the Cannon. Although not a nickname, during the time when Greg Norton played for the Chicago White Sox between 1996 and 2000, Harrison would add the line Norton, you're the greatest after you can put it on the board. Yes. Yes, when Norton hit a home run, this was a mashup of two references from the sitcom The Honeymooners. One character was named Edward Ed Lillywet Norton, and another character, Ralph Cramden, would say to his wife, Alice, baby, you're the greatest. An informal studied by one baseball columnist, based on the number of home team bias comments throughout the course of a game, concluded that Harrison was by a wide margin a broadcaster who openly rooted for his team the most often. He embraced the results, responding, that's the biggest compliment you could give me to call me the biggest homer in baseball. Personal life. While he was still in high school, Harrelson met his first wife, Elizabeth Ann Betty Pacifici, whom he would marry that year. The marriage produced four children, Patricia, Michael, Richard, and John, and three grandchildren, Nicole, Ryan, and Kiefer, and one great-grandson, Jack. Harrelson filed for divorce from Betty on June 28, 1971. In 1970, Harrison was part owner of a $2 million waterfront nightclub in East Boston called the 1800 Club. A three-quarter sized replica of Donald McKay's clipper ship Flying Cloud was docked next to the club and was used as a floating cocktail lounge. The location offered superb views of Boston Harbor and the downtown skyline. The complex was severely damaged by fire on January 20, 1971 and never reopened. After retiring from baseball, Harrelson competed in the 1972 British Open. He missed the cut by one stroke, shooting plus 11. On September 13, 1973, Harrison married Eris Haritos. They have two children, daughter Krista and son Casey, as well as two grandchildren, Nico and Alexander. Harrelson's son Casey played in the White Sox minor league system in 1999. The family resides in Orlando, Florida. Harrelson resided in Granger, Indiana during baseball seasons and would often discuss the long commute from his home to guaranteed rate field during broadcasts. Name 6. Hawk Drive, Tucson, Arizona, 